Welcome back to Story Mode. It's 2020 and what looked to be a promising year was anything but. And Last Gamer was in the worst position it's ever been in. Welcome to 2020, where Australia went through one of its biggest fires in history. A fire that set alight parts of Australia covering over 14 million acres. And this was just the beginning. But how far does it reach? Take a look at the north to south miles that we can that we cover all the way from Melbourne to the northern part of the country. That's roughly 1800 miles. That doesn't even compare to California. You have to head all the way into British Columbia, past Vancouver, to even get that far across the West Coast. So we're talking all the way from San Diego to Vancouver is about 1,200 miles. Imagine even farther north into Canada with fires burning all along the coastline. And while the fires were starting to come to an end, we had something worse, a pandemic perhaps called COVID-19. Evolving situation that we have to look, it could go either way. Yeah. It could turn out to be a lot of miles in uh, infections and not a big problem, or it can turn out to be a really serious problem. On this episode of The Last Gamer Show, it is the season finale. So we will be looking at a great many things. We're gonna touch base with Joel on what's happening with Virtual Formula and lots, lots, Lots more. Yes, yeah, so this was a season finale of The Last Gamer Show. And as much as I liked the format, I didn't really like the title. It could be because it's a little bit wordy. The Last Gamer Show. It's almost like I'm repeating my name within a segment. So I decided to go for something a lot more catchy. In the meantime, I was dealing with the Virtual Formula Arcade Machine. They were getting delivered every week. You see, it took four truck deliveries to get all of the cars and the electronics. Now they were a gift from Time Zone. I didn't have to pay a cent for them. And one of my fans told me about them. But in truth, they were an absolute nightmare. I just had so much on my plate already and really I had no time for them. Now that we've axed the last gamer show, it was time to come up with a new toll. And as you see, it was playtime. Playtime was simple and straight to the point. I made a simple intro that didn't go as long and the show was there just to talk about anything, whether it be new games, new hardware, topics such as digital versus physical and things like that. And it started getting traction. As the year was starting to wrap up and we're just moving into 2020, I had an email from a guy in Norway. And this guy wanted to buy my collection. Not just video games, but everything. Amiibos, arcade machines, pinballs, the whole lot. Out of interest, I thought I'd talk to him via Skype. And the meetings were fantastic. We actually got to talk to his wife and him. He explained why he wanted it. He wanted to open up a museum in the next five years. And this would be an amazing start. He even said he would honor me and have my name or last gamer's name on the plaque of the museum. But I just didn't know. It was a lot of money and I'm talking a lot. Put it this way, I could retire today and be set for life. The issue I had is these video games are priceless and it's not about the games themselves, it's about the journey getting them. No matter what, I would not rush my decision and decide over the next couple of months. In the meantime, I was making some amazing videos with Luke because we're about to relaunch Insert Coin, but this time it would have a different name. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Flashback. On Flashback, we're going to be looking at arcade restoration and arcade maintenance. I'm joined 
by my son Luke. How are you, Luke? Hi, Dad. I'm eager to start learning. Good on you, Luke. <laughs> That's a fantastic attitude to have because arcades are all about learning. As you can see, I'm so enthusiastic and Luke was extremely enthusiastic. That was not scripted. He was natural and I loved how he wanted to take such interest in repairing the arcades. But what's scary is when he starts correcting me. The sky blue is our negative or neutral and the pink is our 100 volts and that just goes into a black and white cable. We'll be cutting this and connecting it into the, the actual machine itself. It's the other way around. Sky blue is 100 volts. No way. Sorry, Luke, thank you so much. So our pink is our neutral or our negative and the sky blue is our 100 volts. And we'll be connecting that into the machine. Even if they're the wrong way around, it doesn't really matter. It is AC voltage, so it's polarity doesn't really matter but you still should do that just to keep everything nice and uniform. So we'll open up the machine, we'll have a look in there and can't wait. Now I really wanted playtime to take off and what better way to do it than going to a computer meet that I go to every month, the Amiga Users Group. Well, it was a shocking day and I mean shocking. It was hailing that much that our family car was dented to the max. When we got to the Amiga users group, we needed to put that out of our mind and start having some fun. Going back to this meeting brings me back to my roots, the Commodore Amiga, the Commodore 64, and I just couldn't wait to get in there, film it, and put it up on playtime the following week. But nature had other ideas. Here it is, the unseen episode of playtime called the Amiga group. Hi everyone and welcome back to Playtime. Have we got a bit of a fun episode today, haven't we? We, we do, we do. We are out and about. Out and about? Something we haven't done before. No, we haven't, Jess. It is a place of, I was going to say worship, no, almost. A almost. place of worship for, it is called the Amiga Meet. Uh, yes, the well, Amiga a, Users Group. Amiga Users Group. And we're going to go through that doors and there's a lot of people there today, so we're going to have fun. And look who's here. Ooh. Zelda, you come to the Amiga Meet. Okay, so as you can see behind us, it is very, very, very busy. It has been picking up um, the last few times that I've come and we're just noticing more and more people, which is great. It's it's fantastic. Well, that's because of the Amiga, Jess. The Amiga's starting to gain traction and... Grain. Grain traction and gain traction. <laughs> so it's doing both things. And the Commodore 64 as well. But there's other things in there. They're into Atari ST, they're into PC, they're into even into console games. I'm excited, as you can yeah. tell. So we'll go inside and see what the atmosphere is like and maybe try and find Paul and have a bit of a chat to him. Amazing. All right, here with me is my good friend George. I haven't seen George in 27 years. 1993 was roughly the last time. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much right. Yeah, yeah and, and George used to work at a computer shop. What was it called? Um, I think it was Smart Computers or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Smart that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah, in where? Uh, Nidri. Nidri, that's it. Yeah. So Nidri in Melbourne. Yeah, back in the day when you had the store in Preston, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a shop in Preston and um, I used to sell you guys, or your shop, um, Mega Drive converters. Converters, a lot of Street Fighters. A lot of Street Fighters, Fighters for the Super Famicom. Yeah, yeah. With converters and um, and magnifying glasses for the game. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's pretty loud at the moment here. Everyone's playing games and talking and the vibe's really good. I found my good friend Hass. And we go back a long, a long time. time. A long time. Yeah, yeah. So early 90s? Yep, 91, 92. Yeah, 91, yeah. 92, that's right. Yeah. I was going to say 93, but what yeah. am I talking about? Yeah. Now, if you remember story mode, oh, I can't remember when it was. I was about 95, 96. I spoke about Hass coming over to fix up my computer, but now I can talk a little bit more yeah. about you. Oh, yeah. And Hass owned the video game shop, um, which was yeah. not so much in opposition of mine at that time, because I was finished. No, yeah, right. And you yeah. were just starting. Yeah, I, st I opened in 93. Okay, we've got Greg here, who I've just met, and this intrigued me, because obviously it's, it's hardware, it's chips, and Greg is working on, you'll have to explain. Well, for the A500 and later other other machines, this is the test bed. I'm doing some new hardware. So I'm currently working on a graphics card and accelerator card built into one. 
Is this like the vampire? Anything like that? Yeah, a bit, a bit lower down, uh, down the chain. That's that's a little bit further along. Yeah. yeah. But uh, leading up towards that kind of thing. Wow. All right. So I managed to catch him. Here he is, Paul. He's the founder of the Amiga User Group, right? Amiga Users Group. Amiga User Group. Sorry, I forgot the S. How are That's you, Paul? Right. Great, thanks, Joel. Yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. It's Better good. now awesome. I'm here. Yeah, yeah, it's good turnout today. Yeah, it is, it is a good Heaps turnout. You know me, Paul knows me quite well, and I don't leave the house much. No. I come here for this. Yeah. Yeah, so awesome. It's um, it's amazing all the all the faces and some familiar mm. faces today. Yeah, there's heaps of people you know. Now, how long has this been going for? This um, club's been probably going since 1985, actually. 1985. 1985. <laughs> Around that time. That's um, much older than Jess, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so and then um, we've got a similar history with Commodore Amiga and all that kind of stuff. We grew up around the same time, similar age, and that's it. And now. Um, Met George at the group and unbelievable. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> been a while since we've seen each other job, yeah, but you know, yeah. yeah. It's good on you, man. It's been good. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we'll go and play some games. And I remember you actually modded my Saturn yes. at, the, at the time. That yeah. chip? Yeah. Yes. So, so to play backup games. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, I, I got really involved in work and I moved interstate for work as well to Toowoomba for a little while and then came back and we sort of just lost touch, yeah. you know. As you happens. do. Life gets in the way of, you know. But you know, we're back here, we're having a good time. That's it. Playing games, it's retro. Like, it's like nothing, it's like time yeah. hasn't gone by. I know. We're just exactly the same. Yeah, it's and good. you know, George is here, which yeah, you would have... George. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the gang's back, so. So, an O2O processor and a Picasso 2 Plus, basically, into, into one card, which will be in this sort of, well, if you see here, uh, this is the early of the design. This shape here goes roughly there. The Den Denise socket, CPU socket, so over like that. And out the side, you'll have the ports come out the, out the side. Yeah. So that, that will add, add a nice little upgrade. Um, flicker fixer, uh, so you can all, hook it all up to a, a monitor, have a nice solid display. How long have you been working on this? Uh, I, I decided my New Year's resolution last year was to develop Amiga hardware, so I started from scratch to learn to become an engineer. It was just a few months after the Amiga was more or less brought out. People got them pretty quickly in Australia as well, and then the club was set up because there was no real support or anything like that, so then everyone started to more or less um, you know, come and get support and do a lot of, get a lot of things like the 1000 when it yeah, came yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, That's unbelievable. Mm, yeah, it's amazing. So how's that? It's yeah. been going for a long time. And you've mm. hardly missed any meetings? Well, I haven't missed a meeting in about 155 meetings. Because I took a little bit of time off when I was doing, you know, like photography um, about seven days a week and things like that. But since then I've not missed one. So it'd be about 155 I think to be exact. I've not missed so we do 13 a year, so it, yeah, it's been pretty amazing. That's, so that's, it's dedication more or less, you know, that's, that's all crazy. the time. It's good. To set up, Love to it. do things, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's good. And um, yeah, well, you know, and it's family friendly. Kids are here, my kids are here, yeah. and there's a um, couple other guys bring the kids along, it's good. We're getting, we're breeding them in to the Amiga, that's the key, Exactly, isn't it? yep. And Amiga we don't want the Amiga to die. No, nope, that's right. We keep it alive, and there's a lot of people that do 64 and Amiga, so yeah, of course, most of us do that as well. So, that, yeah. that is the better computer. It's pretty amazing. Me, we won't get into oh. that. <laughs> sorry, so <laughs> I, won't, right. I won't say anymore. <laughs> no, that's uh, all right. Um, well, we'll go around and have a chat to yeah, some yeah, other Yeah, awesome. yeah, awesome. Uh, but you know, if you didn't have a Commodore, yeah. that's it. Yeah. You weren't in the in club, so. That's it. That's <laughs> but you know, in Australia, you know, we. It's, it's, we had a massive arcade Everything. culture here. Yeah, whole culture. Yeah, and you know, the first thing you did when you went to the city is you went to the arcades. We saw the latest games. You'd buy a magazine and you'd see the arcades, you'd see it in life. You didn't just read about it, you actually played it. Yeah, I know. And it was just fantastic. Growing up in Melbourne was... Something else. It it's like was, an amusement park, really. It was... Serious. Yeah, you would go to the city and you would go to all the computer stores, 
They have the Amiga stores, you'd go to Maya, you'd look at all the latest stuff there, you'd buy magazines, go to the arcades. I mean, it was, you might see an occasional movie yeah. now and then, and it was just... That's what you do, go and play the arcades, yeah. go and see a movie, yeah. go back and play the arcades. That's it. That's what you'd always That's do. That's all you, you did. Yeah. And, you know, there was flashback, there was all the... Uh, ten four amusements. Yeah. You know, if you're from Melbourne, you'll know all these yeah, places. Yeah, you have to comment if you know those yeah. those places. Yeah. All the ten four flashbacks. Yeah, coin play. I mean, we were just in heaven. We're in heaven. We're in gaming heaven. Yeah. And we're exposed to many different platforms and different gaming systems. Yeah. We've got the best of England, best of Japan. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Sega had big presence here. Massive. Like massive. Capcom. Massive. All, all the greatest yeah. games were out. You'd read it in magazines, as you said, yeah. and you go, yep, that's already here. That's here. We were yeah. very fast at getting arcades and always dedicated. Always. No shortcuts yeah. with Sega. Well, we're outside at the moment because it's too noisy, and I've got a mate here, Dave. Hello. How are you, Dave? Good, thanks. How are you, Joe? Good, oh, mate. Good. Now, Dave and I... Um, I'd see him at the meeting and just say hi and, you know, that's a just small talk. Mm -hmm. Then one day we're out here and we were talking for ages. We had so much in common. We do. Uh, similar experiences growing up. Um, love of games and The Last Ninja being oh, first and foremost. You know, the absolutely. Com and the Commodore 64, of course. Yeah, you have to. Uh, well, you do, you do. Um, yeah, and there were, there were many other things. Yeah. There was a long list. Yeah, it was a long list. And, people in common like oh yeah we, we, we knew a lot of uh similar people yeah, yeah, yeah. friends and crazy. all that sort of stuff yeah that, that's what makes it so amazing all right it's nice and quiet out here so i've grabbed paul for a quick bit more of a talk because it was pretty noisy yeah here. it's very noisy we were talking yeah. before yeah um but i might have subtitles in a couple of things you were saying just started in 1985 <laughs> and things like that but yep. what is your all-time favorite game paul what is wow. it just talking to dave before yep he's like me the All Last right. Ninja Min. I did play The Last Ninja. I love The Last Ninja 1 and 2 and the remix and everything else. But I still love Bubble Bubble. Really? Awesome game. On 64? On the 64. Yeah, yeah, it's still classic. playing the Amiga and the Saturn and all the rest, but it's just something special about it. But the control too on the 64 is good because instead of pressing a button, you can just you know go up, up on the joystick, which yeah. is a little bit easier than pressing buttons all the time. So there's that. Um, I mean, there's so many shoot 'em ups. You've got R Type. You've, you know. Oh, R Type's good. Yeah, R Type's awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's mind boggling how many. IO. There's one called Katakus. Katakus? Yeah, no, Katakus. <laughs> you you calls it Katakus. Katakus. And, I said, and he calls it Katakus. It's correct. <laughs> no. It's Katakus. Yes, it is so Katakus. More, more popular on the Amiga, but, that one, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, Dave, how long have you been coming here for, roughly? I think this will be a third or fourth year. That's pretty yeah. good. Not all that long compared to a lot of other people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Some people have been here. I'm, I'm more of a Commodore 64 yeah. aficionado. Yeah, yeah. The Amigas were cool, but I never actually owned an Amiga. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. Amiga, I didn't know I, that. I used to play Amigas on other people's consoles, or, or Amigas, I should say. Yeah. yeah. Okay, there you go. I'm hmm. the same. I love Amiga and always preach it. But technically, Commodore 64 is my main go-to computer. It, that's the it. playability and all that type of thing, I was saying that before. Well, the games library, for one, is unrivaled, I think, even it, now. Nah, it is. I mean, you'd know something about that, wouldn't you? Games library? A little bit. Yeah, little just, bit. Little, <laughs> just a little bit, yeah. So here I have Mick Burr. He's a mate of mine, Mick. How you going, man? Yeah, thanks, man. That's, that's good. Good. Now, Mick... Um, God, where do we even start with you? So Mick's a, a pretty big collector. He, well, I'm going to let you say what you do. I'm not going to... Yeah, um, geez, I collect everything from you know, his consoles, uh, games, handhelds, um, store display kiosks. Um, yes. Well, anything that has anything to do with yeah, just Video like games. anything to do with games, handhelds, game and watch. Yes. You got you got those ones that you can see through. Yeah, the crystal screen. Crystal screen. That's that blew they're me away. Very interesting those. Yeah, and they're like worth over two grand each. I looked up. Uh, balls worth a fair bit boxed. Okay, it's late into the night and things are still pumping here. There's people all around playing all sorts of games, Amiga, Commodore 64, and still no Atari ST, but that's another story. I got here with me, mate Luke. How you going, man? How you going, man? How you doing? Not bad, not bad. Yeah. So Luke has been coming to the meet. How long, Luke? Uh, I, I, actually, I, I thought you were going to ask me that question. Uh, probably about 
five years. Five years? Oh, four it's to a, five, yeah. Yeah, it's a good run. Yeah, so, and I love it, so. Yeah, it's good. And it was, it's amazing to find out that it was started in 85. It's I know. Club. So, Luke, you play the Amiga one, do you play the 64 one as well? I do, yeah, well, I was, I haven't had a 64 for a while, for a few years now, I'm looking at getting another 64, just to, uh, and getting back into it, so, yeah, but, um, I was very good on the 64 version, yeah. and I actually was playing it before, and I'm a bit rough actually, so I've got a bit more practice, I think. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But nice. yeah, I love, I love this one, and uh, if I play it on camera, I think I'm gonna. Oh, we're uh, we're gonna get you, we have to get you playing. Okay, okay. We definitely have to get you playing. Uh, no worries, Come on, yep. Luke. Um, and yeah, so he's been playing it, and. Because my, my son's name's Luke, we sometimes get them mixed up. I'll call out to Luke, you'll be across the room, and then Luke will go, yeah, or it's vice versa, that's kind of funny. Uh, but yeah, he calls himself Lukey as well in this high score. And I saw my son was in the high score before. Yes. No, yeah. not, too, not as good as you, that's for nah, sure. that's right, but it's great to have another Luke on, on, yeah, on the why score. Not? Why exactly. Not? <laughs> One more thing. What's that? You're a massive Kiss fanatic. Yeah, and I've actually met them and everything, the boys. Isn't that crazy? And um, actually, I met uh, the boys, the KISS guys, in uh, 2015. I did the meet and greet when they came, and Paul Stanley, it didn't happen. Uh, we actually, my mate and I, did the meet, got the meet and greet tickets for the first show, uh, and that starts during the day, and got chatting with Paul, and he said, oh, uh, I, I, I showed him my collection and he said it's awesome and he said I should come to your house. But that never actually happened unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, but he, Paul is one of those guys that would have, you know, he would have done the deal I reckon if he had more time. And who's your favourite? Uh, Paul I reckon, yeah, yeah, because we have, uh, I got health problems and was born with a few things and uh, Paul's got a bad heart and uh, hearing problem and uh, that was one of the reasons why he wanted to be famous, actually. Wow. So, you know. That's unreal. Yeah. Thanks, Luke. Yeah. You're a legend, man. Yeah. And it was actually Luke's idea for me to come here and bring the camera. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've got to promote the place, you know? Yeah. Am I out of frame? My elbow is. Is that what well, it come, is? Come in a bit. That's All right. Just trying to... There we go. All right. So we're just, just cool like we're having a conversation, except you've got to look at the people. Down the barrel. Down the barrel. You know, mate. Come on. I know, I know, the I, I, of, I know, I know, exactly. I know, I know, but I've spent very little time in front of, sorry, yeah, in, in front of the camera. Yeah. All right, just don't worry, I can edit out anything if you just, if you go <laughs> like that for no reason, I can edit it out. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cause Pop music on. No, all right, um, just come games be, or general thing. Oh, I know what I'll say. Yep, yeah, right. Yes. We are. <laughs> I won't leave that in. Um, the other thing is, oh, what I was going to say, I just kind of lost my train of thought. What was I saying? I don't know. We didn't talk we about didn't, we that. We didn't really plan this. No. Oh. And now it's evident. Man, I can... I See you next time. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. That was just some of the footage. I actually have around two and a half hours of footage that I took that day, and we went late into the night, I think we went until like 11 o'clock at night, and I just couldn't wait to get home and edit this footage and have it out for that Friday week. But nature had other ideas, and a transformer in our street got hit, sending a huge surge over 20,000 volts through to most of the houses in the area, and mine was deeply affected with all the electronics I had but we may do with what we could. We're living in the dark for a while there, but then I managed to rewire the circuit board and fix things up from there. In the meantime, we sold off our car and then I had to get fixing the rest of the house and then move on to all the electronics that were damaged. To my surprise, it was quite easy. The projector only needed a fuse and two capacitors. The monster power board, a fuse and a capacitor and a resistor and the Moran's amp got fixed for next to nothing thanks to the guys at Moran's. It's now working absolutely perfect. My Sharp TV which I've had for like 8 years needed a fuse and a bunch of capacitors and a resistor 
I rebuilt the electrical board in the arcade room. It's now running perfect. And I had to replace about 11 or 12 power points and they are working fine. My Apple computer did have a problem. Apple fixed it for free. My PS4 Pro and Xbox One X had some problems. My friend Dave fixed them up. They now work perfect. And finally, where we had the leak got repaired. I repaired the roof myself and my good friend Adrian came and did the plastering. The only thing now I had to repair was the arcade room, the arcade machines themselves. There were a lot that were not working, pretty much 90% of them, and now I had to work out what I'm going to do with them and what I'm going to do with Last Gamer.